everybody, it's me, Chris Kratt from Wild Kratts. How you doing? I bet you're spending a lot of time at home right now, right? Probably not going to school. Well, I know how you feel because I'm spending a lot of time at home too. <laughs> Normally, Martin and I would be out traveling around the world, creature adventuring in different countries, taking airplanes, but we can't do that right now. We can't get on airplanes. We can't go to other parts of the world. So we're here too, in and around our homes, doing a lot of the same things that you're doing. And I thought right now, one of the things I've been doing a lot of is reading, because reading is a great way to learn about animals. And I love animals, so I'm checking out the animals closer to my house, the ones that live right around my house. That's one thing I can do. Uh, you can watch shows like Wild Kratts to learn more about animals, and we can all read books to learn more about animals too. And um, so I thought today we'd read a book together about animals and learn a little something about them. Because I know all of you know that Martin and I do TV shows about animals, right? But we also are authors and we write books about animals too. So I'm gonna read you one of our latest Wild Kratts books. It's called Wild Dogs and Canines. Hey, maybe you have a pet dog and you wanna get your dog so we can read this book together with your dog. I'll give you a few minutes to go and run and get your dog and, and put him or her on your lap with you or maybe lie on the rug with your pet dog. And it doesn't have to be a dog. If you don't have a dog and you have a cat or a hamster or any other kind of pet, maybe you wanna read this book with them too. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that and get set up. And while you're doing it, I'll tell you about the, pet, the first pet dog that Martin and I had when we were kids, it was a short-haired St. Bernard, and she was a wonderful dog. We would play with her, and when I say we, I mean my brother, my two sisters, and I. We would play with our dog, and she was really protective of us, because we were little kids at the time. And so she would watch over us, and she would pull us on the toboggan in the winter time, and she would go swimming with us in the summertime. She was a great pet dog. Dogs are great pets. And so, hopefully you have your dog now, or any other kind of pet that you want to bring. And, um, but you don't have to. <laughs> We're still going to read it together. Um, we're going to read about the cousins of maybe your pet dog. And so this is Wild Kratts, Wild Dogs, and Canines. All right, you ready? Here we go. Wild Dogs and Canines. What is found all over the world in different habitats? What hunts together in pairs or packs? Canids! What's a canid, bro? There's Martin and I setting off on an adventure. Canids are a group of animals that includes canines, such as wolves and coyotes. The group also includes vulpines, such as foxes. They all have many features in common. Some of those features, sharp eyesight, muscular legs for endurance running, tails for balance, great sense of smell, strong jaws and teeth, claws that grip the ground. See, all those features on a wild dog's body. This wild dog is a dingo. This wild dog is a gray wolf. There are about 36 different species of wild canids in the world. They come in many different sizes, Chris says. Martin suggests, let's meet some of them. And look, those are just some of the wild dogs in the world. All different colors, all different sizes. So let's have a look at some. Fennec Fox. Fennec foxes are the smallest canids. 
they live in one of the world's biggest deserts, the Sahara. They don't have to drink a lot of water. They get water from the food they eat. Not much water in deserts, right? Cool looking fox. Bat-eared fox. Another little big-eared fox is the bat-eared fox. They listen for insects to eat. Then they lick beetles and termites right off the ground. <laughs> Slurp. <laughs> There's Martin in his bat-eared fox power suit with a bat-eared fox saying, yum, termites. Yum for a bat-eared fox, not for a human. Bush dog. The South American bush dog is rarely seen. It can live in burrows or hollow tree trunks deep in the Amazon rainforest. These tough dogs share territory with bigger predators, such as the jaguar. Red fox. These foxes live all around the northern half of the world. They can use their tail to keep warm in cold weather. Red foxes aren't always red. They also come in different colors, like black or silver. See there, the red fox can wrap its tail right around its face and nose to keep warm. And look at the different color faces. Even though they're called red foxes. Dole. The dole is also called the Indian wild dog. Doles are strong and fierce, but they also work together. A dole pack can have 30 dogs. Together, doles even take on big predators, such as tigers. Oh yeah, a tiger doesn't want to mess with a big pack of doles. Coyote. The coyote is a medium-sized canid. Coyotes are very smart. They eat all kinds of foods and live in all kinds of habitats. They survive in hot deserts, snow-covered prairies, tropical rainforests, and even cities. There's a coyote in a snowy winter scene, and there it's, it's catching a vole. Those are little rodents that in the wintertime, they live underneath the snow, but the coyotes can hear them. And when they do, they take a big jumping leap and crash through the snow, grabbing the vole. There's a coyote in the city. Very adaptable creatures. African wild dog. African wild dogs are also called painted dogs because each one has a unique coat pattern. They hunt by chasing prey across the savanna. While the pack hunts, one adult always stays at the den to take care of the pups. <laughs> There's Chris in his wild dog power suit back at the den saying, uh-oh, today is my turn to take care of the pups and they can be pretty playful. <laughs> They're cute too. Dingo. Dingoes live in Australia. They can hunt alone or in packs. They hunt both big prey and small prey, from kangaroos to rodents. There are the dingoes hunting big prey, the kangaroos. And Chris is saying, hop to it. <laughs> That's what a kangaroo has to do when the dingo packs around. Get out of there. Maned wolf. Maned wolves have very long legs, so they can see above the tall grass of their South American home. Look at the long legs of the maned wolf. 
Wow. Ethiopian wolf. This is one of the rarest canids. These wolves survive in the mountains of Ethiopia and eat mostly giant mole rats. There's the Ethiopian wolf. And of course, giant mole rats live underground in burrows. <laughs> this one's behind her. Arctic wolf. Arctic wolves are white and blend into the snow. They eat small creatures such as mice and lemmings, but they also use teamwork to hunt bigger prey such as musk oxen. And there's the scene. Chris in his Arctic wolf power suit with the Arctic wolves saying, keep running wolf back. And Martin in his musk oxen power suit with the musk oxen saying, nice try, bro. Because when musk oxen defend themselves, they round up in a circle with their pointy horns all pointed outward. And that can be pretty dangerous for even a pack of Arctic wolves. Gray wolf. Gray wolves work together as a pack when hunting prey or defending territory. They use smells, body language, sounds, like their famous howl, to communicate. A wolf pup starts to howl when it is only eight weeks old. <laughs> There's the wolf pack and the cute little pup trying his howl. Hey, let's try ours. Gray wolves. Foxes, wild dogs, coyotes, and wolves all have amazing creature powers. We love them running free and in the wild. And there we are in our power suits, running with the wolves, free and in the wild. So there you have it. There are some pretty cool wild dogs and canines in the world, right? I wonder what your favorite one is. I can't really pick my favorite, but if I had to, I might say African wild dogs. They're very cool, but all of them are. So now I also have some questions that came in that you might want to hear the answers to. First one, where did you get the idea for wild crats? Martin and I had the idea for wild crats, my brother Martin and I, and we had been doing wildlife documentaries since we were in college. We always loved animals and we thought, wow, wouldn't it be fun to make wildlife documentaries? And so we just tried it. We got a camcorder, we went out with our camping gear, and we started making wildlife documentaries that we thought were fun. And we sent them around, and we brought them into schools and showed kids, and people really liked them a lot. It was a lot of hard work, but eventually, we got our first wildlife series, our first television show. And we were traveling all over the world making our, our wildlife documentaries, our animal shows, and we were doing it in live action. And we were filming some amazing behaviors that animals did. But there were always amazing behaviors that we wanted to film and we wanted to show that were almost impossible to film, like, like giant squid and sperm whales battling under the sea. No one has ever filmed that. So we thought, for Wild Kratz, when it was time to make this show, we thought, what if we did a show that was a mix of live action filming and animated stories? And we could show any kind of animal behavior that we wanted to in the animation. And we could also have power suits. We thought, wouldn't it be awesome to think about what it would be like to have the amazing creature powers, the amazing abilities of animals. So we created Wild Kratz. And it is such a fun show to make. <laughs> and we've got 
over 100 episodes right now, over 150, I think, and we're still making more. Right now, we're making more episodes for you guys. It's a little bit harder because we can't go to our studio and go out filming around the world, but our team is still working to get those episodes to you. Next question, what is it like seeing yourselves as cartoons? <laughs> It is pretty strange to see yourself as a cartoon, but it's also fun because it's using your imagination, right? I love to use my imagination. And, you know, that's an idea actually for when you're spending a lot of time at home like you are right now, is to use your imagination. You can write stories, you can draw pictures and, 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 and practice drawing and practice cartoons if you're interested in that. Whatever you're interested in, maybe there's a way that you can practice it or learn more about it while you're at home. What are your favorite creature powers? <laughs> this is the hardest question to answer because there are so many amazing creature powers out there. That's one of the things I like so much about animals is every animal has its special ability, its unique ability, its creature power. Like geckos can climb walls and ceilings. Cheetahs can run as fast as a car. A peregrine falcon can go over 200 miles an hour in a stoop. I mean, there, and of course, if you like swimming, elephant seals, sperm whales, they can dive super deep down to the depths of the ocean. Imagine what it would be like to be able to do that and explore the deep sea. So there are lots of amazing creature powers. So when I'm asked this question, it usually depends on like what I kind of want to do at that time. But right now I'm gonna pick a, a good climbing power maybe spider monkey power because boy would I love to be able to leap around the tree branches and explore the canopies of the rainforest. That would be pretty cool to climb like a spider monkey can. Next question. What do you do to have fun when you have to stay inside? I don't mind staying inside. I love to get outside, but sometimes it's okay to be inside too. And I do things like read books. I like to do crafts and build things with my sons. They both like to build things, and I do too. Um, I like to write stories, like I was talking about before. I love writing stories. And, you know, at times like these, you can do things in and around your house, like just right outside your house, like I am right now on my porch. There are lots of animals. You can hear the birds singing right now. Spring is on the way. So there's gonna be lots of birds making their nests around your house. You know, there might be, um, there might be some rabbits that you might see. There are worms that are becoming, gonna be coming above ground soon. So you can have many tiny little creature adventures right around your house too. And you know what else is an awesome thing to do this time of year? And part of it is inside planning and part of it is right around your house, outside maybe, um, is to create little wildlife hotspots around your house. You can, you can plant flowers for hummingbirds and for butterflies and for bees, you know, Lots of different wildlife love flower gardens. Um, you could create little rock piles, a rock pile somewhere that maybe some some rodents want to live in, or or y little brush piles are good for other kinds of birds. Of course, every animal needs some water sources, so maybe you want to build a bird bath. There are little things you can do to make your your backyard into a little wildlife refuge. So that's one fun thing to do, and there are lots more. One thing I really encourage you to do is to just explore your interests, no matter what they are, whether they have to do with animals, art, anything else. Think about how you can learn more about that interest while you're inside. Um, and, and there's probably a way you can do it, and you can talk to your parents about it too. All right, well, we're all in this together. 
I'm staying home a lot. You're staying home a lot. And, um, you know, at some point, I'm looking forward to getting back out there on the creature trail and, and traveling to different parts of the world again and meeting different animals. But right now, we're together spending more time at home. And I really enjoyed reading the book with you today. And so, until next time, keep on creature adventuring. And we'll see you on the Creature Trail. Bye.